Now, range is something we use to describe the range of numbers we have. Okay, so for instance, if we had the numbers 2, 2, 4, 21, 19, and 5, what we would do is we'd take our biggest number, 21, and our smallest number, 2, and we would say, well, these numbers range from 2 to 21, meaning they're no smaller than 2 and they're no bigger than 21, so they range between the two. And what we do is we subtract it. We go 21 minus 2, which is 19. And that means that there's a difference of 19 between the biggest and smallest number. So let's say we had a different example. Let's say we had the numbers 3, 4, 3, 3, 4. These ones only range between 3 and 4. So it's got a very small range. And if we do the biggest number 4 minus the smallest number 3, we get 1 meaning that there's only a difference of one between each of our numbers. So essentially the range helps us know how far apart our numbers range from. So if we have a big difference between numbers, like if we have the number 1 and the number 100, then we're going to have a range of 99. It's going to be a big range because the numbers are far apart. If we have a small range, a range of 1, we're going to have an example like our 3, 4, 3, 3, 4, where none of the numbers are more than one apart. So for example one, Brad likes to solve the Rubik's Cube. Construct a box and whisker pot to show how long it takes him to solve a Rubik's Cube. Times taken to solve the Rubik's Cube in minutes are 14, 18, 15, 20, 21, 19, 21 and 1. Now we can see that he's had this um, really good day where he must have solved it in one minute good on him. Most of the time it's between 14 and 21 and that's still really good. And to make a judgment about how good he is on the Rubik's Cube we're going to start by putting these numbers in order. So we'll have 1, 14, 15, 18, 19, 20, 21, 21. And once we put them in order we're going to split them into quarters or into groups of four. And so we'll put a line here, here and here and you can see we've split it into quarters. And the line in the middle is actually our median. Because remember we said the median is the middle number, and that median is 18.5. And this line here on the left is called our first quartile or lower quartile because it's in the lower quarter. And this number is going to be 14.5 because it's between 14 and 15. Then we've got our upper quartile, or known as our third quartile, which we're going to say is 20.5 because it's got to be halfway between those two numbers. Okay, now when you split it into quarters, you've got this middle half here between the 14.5 and the 20.5. And this is a very important section because it ignores your out your outliers and your um, your things on the edges, I guess. Like, for instance, notice how the one minute is on the edge, on the left edge. We don't really want to worry about that one minute because it's so, it's so far away um, from his normal time where he solves things. And so we like to concentrate on this middle half. Earlier we learnt how to calculate the range, which was the biggest number minus the smaller number. We also find what's called the interquartile range, which is the range of this middle section. And we do that by subtracting the 20.5, sorry, subtracting 14.5 from 20.5. And this gives us our interquartile range of 6 as opposed to our range, which was 21 minus 1 or 20. So let's revise what we have. We've got the median. 18.5. We've got our lower quartile of 14.5 and our upper quartile of 20.5. Uh, we've also got what's called our upper extreme, which is 21. The upper extreme is just the very last number. And the lower extreme. Now the lower extreme you would think was 1 because that's our lowest number. But I'm going to say it's 14. 
And the reason for this is because the one is so far away from all our scores or our data. This one has a special name. This one's actually called our outlier. And the way you figure out if it's an outlier is what you do is you take the interquartile range, you times it by 1.5, giving us 9. And if it's 9 steps away from the other lowest number, then it's going to be an outlier. So it's going to be on its own. And now what we're going to, and now we have all we need to make our box and whisker plot. And all we do is between the two quartile sections, you make a box with a line in the middle where the median is. And then you connect it with lines to our upper extreme and our lower extreme. And your outline just remains as a little x out there away from our data that's grouped together.